Hi, so welcome to In The Chair with Tabitha JK. Now, this is a series that is really exciting because I get to reveal some of the amazing things that happen in my chair in the salon, for real. Um, I've always said that I'm really lucky as an organic hairdresser because I get to have really incredible conversations with people. Um, and those conversations can be around all sorts of, um, all sorts of topics and things that really matter. I love, I love getting into the person that's in my chair, you know, and, and actually sort of starting something that's of depth and not mm. necessarily, I mean, all hairdressers have great experiences with their guests um, in that you get to really know somebody and of course we're touching somebody's head and it's all very personal and it's lovely that you, we get to sort of have that depth with, um, mm. with that relationship. So I think all hairdressers would say that they're really blessed in that way. <laughs> it's just a great thing. I mean, officially, hairdressers are the happiest profession. Oh, really? They wow. Say. Yeah, and, and I think this is one of the reasons because we get this really personal engagement with people, which nice. is really magical. Mm. But I would say, as an organic hairdresser, I have another twist on it. And so people know that I'm working differently, know that I, my interests around the way I'm working um, are really deep because mm. of, you know, I've gone to the trouble of developing my own product range. All of this is around the fact that I really care about this process. The passion. And I, I want to improve it. Absolutely. Mm. So we just get to have the most amazing conversations. So I thought that it would be really lovely to, to reveal a little bit more about that. So Caro and I have been in the salon this afternoon mm -hmm. doing hair. It's not very easy to film actually us having a conversation and translate that. So today we're sitting in the hairdressing chairs where we can really um, go back to some of the conversation that we were having earlier. So let me explain a little more and let me introduce the wonderful Caro Hen who can tell you a little bit more about herself. Thank you very much, Tamitha. <laughs> so yeah, where do I even start? Um, I guess, to, just to very quickly summarize, um, at the moment I am a part-time Chief Marketing Officer of Wolf & Badger, so a sustainable, uniquely independent uh, retailer for fashion, jewelry and beauty products. And um, that is just a part-time role for me, but a very passionate part-time role because I used to head up the luxury team at Google and, you know, had a career that a lot of people would have wanted probably and thought, wow, yeah, this sounds amazing. really, really impressive. But for me, it wasn't really because it wasn't the right fit. I was always someone who absolutely loved smaller independent brands. And, you know, when I was invited to a Alexander McQueen sample sale, it would be like, mm, you know, do I really want to buy that? Particularly as you get to know the bigger brands better. Yeah. It gets trickier and trickier because you know all of their dirty little secrets. Um, and, you know, I always very much preferred on holidays or just in London to, to um, just explore and find little gems. And so at some point it was time for me to really leave this world that I wasn't passionate about. And I really thought I wanted to do something where, you know, I can really be more passionate and closer to who I am, you know, because yeah. it, it was two different Carolines, the professional and the private one. And so a year and a half ago, I left this world and was very blessed to, to be offered the job as Chief Marketing Officer at Wolf & Badger. But for me, again, the Caroline that I wanted to be needed more space for creativity. So I went out to um, really do lots of other projects as well. And again, projects with companies that I love and most of the brands that I do that I help with marketing strategy, creative strategy as well, are small independent brands. And it's so amazing to see how they grow and how you know this, this entire sphere becomes more and more a part of my life. Yeah. And yeah, now it's the private and the business caro come together much better. Isn't that lovely? They yeah. feel that you can put your real heart and soul into what you're doing because mm. it's just more authentically you. Yeah, absolutely. And working with brands like yourself, you know, and then if you if you start putting together some really great creative, whatever, a beauty campaign or something like that, um, or, you know, we talk about a Meet the Maker event, things like that, and then you see how you sell more, you know, that makes me so happy rather than seeing that the caring group is increasing their profit by 25%. You know, this is, who does that go to? It's just basically an imaginary ghost somewhere that you don't really know. And yeah, I think that the, for me, the personal aspect is really important. That's so interesting, isn't it? It's, mm. um, 
Yeah. yeah, I know for me too as a, as a consumer, I've always had this feeling that I want to know who's behind the brand mm. um, and I want to know where I'm putting my where I'm putting my money and oh, what, yeah. what, that, what that is actually going to, the implications there. Mm. Um, and it's just, right now there are so many amazing brands. I mean, I'm in love with Wolf & Badger for that reason. <laughs> I just love the brand. Um, I love, um, just it's just such an amazing concept and I love that it honours the, the real creativity mm. um, in, in the people because it allows them to be, to, to be seen on a, on a platform that independently they may not be able to be seen on. Exactly. So collectively, with, under the Wolf and Badger umbrella, they get to reveal, mm. but still say really true and authentic as, the, as their own brand, which is wonderful. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Um, we just had a, um, a brand strategy workshop last week, and the entire management team, basically, the first thing that we agreed on was that we are there to do the right thing. Mm. And that, for me, was really powerful to say, okay, we're not just there to make money. Obviously, in the end, it would be nice if we did. Of course, <laughs> and we, we all have to yeah. survive, so that's also exactly. important, of course. But this integrity and really bringing it all together, finding the right brands as well, the curation aspect for me is also really fascinating. Yes. And sometimes we have to be ruthless. You know, brands change, and as they grow, often don't do the right thing any longer. And then we have to come in and remind them again that, obviously, you know, this is a mutual contract and relationship here. And yes. You know, we, we have to stay true to who we both promised to be at the very beginning of the yes. relationship, right? Yes. This yeah. is such... I mean, it's really interesting. I've just been on a, um, um, a conference last week up mm. in uh, Fintorn in Scotland. Oh, beautiful. I know. It was incredible. Really incredible. And a, and a really mad... You know, Fintorn is just such a magical place. And we were there for a conference around spirited business. It was this, essentially we're exploring the idea of what business could look like in the future in an mm. ideal world how could we become those businesses that are sort of really in their growth still trying really still staying really true to their core and true to the essence and true to what the founders initial ideals were which is tricky um, it's so tricky to navigate that in yeah. the real life world mm. um, and, um, but yes something for me personally I'm very passionately want to Managed to hold that space going through, you know. Oh God, yeah. Um, and and all the things that really matter to me. But that's why I've. I mean, I just. I don't know. I feel really lucky that as I've always done what I love doing, and mm. I'm still doing what I love doing, and that's just evolving and yeah. all the time. And therefore, I, I don't. I wouldn't want to not love it. So if oh, I, yeah. I can't, this company can't become something I don't love anymore. Oh God, yeah. So holding that space and really staying authentic is really, really important. Mm. But as you say, it's not easy. And the whole point about, uh, we, we talked about that um, er, in an earlier discussion yes. at some point, is that, you know, a lot of people build a company to sell it. But, you know, that for, for both of us, I think, you know, that this goes completely against sustainability. Against yes, right? You know, to build something to sell it and then not care what happens with it at some point. Absolutely just really goes against everything we believe in, I guess, right? Totally, yeah. totally. No, I mean, I mean I, I've so often encountered people who say to me, so what's your exit strategy? You know, yeah. that's like my, the opening line with what, I'm, what my plans are for my business. Like, really? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, actually, sorry. <laughs> Holding the space, making sure it's still... Yeah. You know, and, and actually all I get excited about is what the future holds as we mm. grow, like how much more sustainable mm. can I make things, you know, yeah. sort of what that, how that changes my buying power and how mm. that means that what I can do with that buying power, you oh, know, absolutely. How, how many other um, growers around the world could I contribute to helping mm. and what could that look like? It's like, that's so exciting actually, mm. trying, you know, being involved in that growth and, oh yeah. Um, and those connections going forward, that just makes me feel even more alive about the project. Totally, you know? yeah. Um, and I'm really grateful that it's getting cooler and cooler because, you know, no matter what, what I've decided, because it's it, the sustainability space or, you know, doing things ethically has such a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. We're always these, you know people wearing purple hemp t-shirts that are really ugly and you know that are using you know organic skincare organic hair care you immediately associate with someone putting together what oil and honey at home and putting it onto their scalp yeah so it, it has a really bad reputation or used to have mm. and I think now we see 
it's it's cool you know and i'm very grateful for the vegans the vegetarians out there that you know it's now not just about food because they are a very strong force there right and they're yes. bringing it into beauty they bring it into fashion and i've given up on the idea that everybody wants to be living with integrity that everybody has a higher motive and you know what if 90 percent of the people that buy Wolf and Badger products, your products are people that just think the design looks pretty, so be it. You know, or the yeah. smell is great, you know, and if it's like, oh, by the way, and it's an organic great product, yeah. you know, then that's cool. Absolutely. You know? and, yes. and we have to get over the lecturing. And I find that extremely hard because it's really deeply ingrained in who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, just to let go and say, you know what, if you want to use that Pantene shampoo, you can't do anything about it, you know, but hopefully one day you will see that my hair looks better than yours. And, you know, then you'll ask, why does it smell so nice? You know, even if it's the smell and it's not just if it's the things that are totally superficial. But if that's what moves people, we should be happy, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to... Once I got to the point of coming up with my ideas around what the product should be in terms of its purity, mm. I wanted to present it in a way that was just all about luxury, all about mm. you know, how, let's have fun, this looks intriguing, yeah. I want to touch, I want to feel, yeah. I want to smell, and when you do smell, it's you know then you're on a whole journey with that too, and all of the aromatherapy, for example, I think that's, um, mm. I had great fun with that because I wanted to just not lose any excitement it didn't need to look like a green product as you say oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah exactly i think we it's just as you say it's a really exciting period because because it, we're not there anymore we can really have fun mm. we can still be high fashion we can still be um mm. you know in all aspects and and still feel that we're we're making a good purchase that's that's not harming you know th those things that might matter to you uh, in that moment whether mm. so for me personally it might be that would be the way I would think and I would try and make conscious decisions as mm. I'm consuming and I would turn myself as a I don't want a label but I'm happy to say I'm a conscious consumer mm. um, but when it comes to um, engaging with people I think it's just really lovely that um, if somebody is just feeling conscious for that hour <laughs> that they're thinking about something then that's how they're being touched and that's fine mm. that's also you know that's that's lovely sort of uh, you know that people can be coming in at all levels yeah and um, you need an entry point yeah right for me that's really something that i'm getting better and better at but i see even you know with the people that i work with or you know the entire industry but then also my group of friends my family how people struggle to find the right balance, mm -hmm. you know, because it starts with, it often starts with food because mm -hmm. people seem to understand that what they put into their bodies has to be good for yes. them to be good. Yeah. yeah. And, but there was a lot of education involved in that, right? Definitely. And more and more schools have courses on education, on, on nutrition and things like that. But then where does it end, right? And I think everybody needs to like find their own pace as well and sort of you know what do they do you know for me the the worst are, are the people that are ultra militant about their food but then they go and buy their clothes at primark and they use you know maybe they use shampoo that wasn't animal tested but it's still got a lot of chemicals in it and i was like okay i understand that you're worried about the animals on the planet but i still don't understand why you're not worried about yourself or others you know, that manufacture your clothes or whatever it is. And yes. I think we see that the evolution has started, that people think further. And, you know, beauty, I think, is even the step before fashion. So, you know, first it's, it's because it's still, people logically understand that if they put something on their scalp, on their skin, that obviously this is an organ. Yeah. And they still don't understand that if they wear polyester and it rubs into your skin every day and then it goes into the ocean, you know, that obviously that has a, a more long term effect as well on your health, on everybody's health. Right. It's, I still struggle with that because, of course, we can only investigate so you know so much we can only invest so much time yes in the investigation as well and you know just today you know being in in the real chair with you earlier <laughs> you know i again learned so much about 
you know, plastic and what's, you know, all the different things that make your hair soft. You know, we, we talked about the silicones before, which I had no idea yeah. were, you know, equally harmful. But yeah, for me, it, it's really sort of balancing this out and, and how much time do you want to invest? And we are all incredibly busy individuals and yes. particularly the people that care about sustainability and, and you know, ethical organical products organic well organical <laughs> um that could be anything <laughs> yeah exactly but these are normally people that probably have a slightly higher education at the moment right that are very busy people normally yes, yes. and then you know how much time do you spend and how much education can you control yourself and yeah. you know there's still so much marketing that tries to divert us from from the real message, right? Definitely. And it's just saying your hair is most soft if you put lots of silicone and it. Don't trust all the organic stuff. It will not work, right? And there's so much mistrust there as well. Yeah. Or don't buy anything that's organic cotton because it will, will fall apart. Yes. You know, oh. do something industrially manufactured. Yeah, I can see you rolling your eyes. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I know, and, and there is so much confusion for consumers on that mm. basis as well. So, yeah. you know, if you're looking for product, well, you know, where on earth do you start? Mm. I have so many conversations with people say, oh, I use such and such a brand, and that's natural, isn't it? And I'm thinking, oh, mm. no, really, really not. But mm. I understand why you believe it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think two things I wanted to say about what you brought up, though, is I, th I think that, you know, it's, it's also perfection. It's, it's like this whole, this is a journey just like life mm. is a journey. It's not easy to a, a attain a, per a perfect balance here. Mm. Um, and I think that just being conscious and being awake and, and also because if, you th if you've got a chemical product, so you've got a chemical mascara, well throwing it away is not good either. You've bought it now. You know, you, this has to be used yeah. up. You know what I mean? It's sort of, um, when, but when it needs to be replaced, make, you know, thinking about, well, where are you actually going to put that packaging? What's going to happen next? how could you be better in the way that you're disposing of mm. those items and then when you next purchase can you think about how that could look better and you know one step at a time every little yeah. thing is an improvement um and i think sometimes for some it can feel so overwhelming that oh. it's just easier not to yeah. open that door and it also feels like is it going to be mega um expensive to change everything oh. i do well yeah. yeah it would be if you change everything you do but you don't need to mm. and and the beauty is that the quality and the variety of what's out there now is just so vast. So many amazing companies out there hmm. producing incredible clothes who, who, as you pointed out, you know, along the way, the farmers growing that cotton hmm. haven't had deformed children because they have, you know, the whole process of how that cotton has been managed has been different. Yeah. You know, the processing of the product, the dyeing of the product. So we hmm. hear all these stories oh, about God. men with... Um, working in South yeah. America and they have blue arms where they're dying denim and oh, it's just you know oh, so God. many yeah. hideous things and then I, I heard a story of someone who you know once they had then um, somebody who uh, uh, yeah a couple of young Australian girls who'd met uh, a man and he'd got blue arms to here and when they chatted to him they found out that he'd just lost his father, who worked in the same factory. Oh, but when the autopsy was done on his father, all of the organs were blue too. Oh, Which is nice. hideous. And of course, it would oh. be, because that's the point. This, it's an this organ. This second mouth. We forget. Yeah. Our skin is an organ. Yeah. Everything penetrates and goes oh, through. God. So of course it's yeah. going to go inside. And of course, oh. long term... Exactly. Well, that touched this young, um, I can't, forgive me now because I can't think of the name of the brand, which isn't helpful, but a wonderful Australian brand that they would so touch with that they went away and yeah. set up a denim brand yeah. and really looked at their whole ethics of how it was mm. produced. And, oh, yeah. and there were many, many people doing really amazing things with similar stories. And that's, you know, the only way things will get better is if that's taken care of, it's mm. actually the brands and the companies that need to take care of those things. Yeah. So that the consumers can have freedom to choose. Oh, totally. But yeah. also, I think there's a real need for transparency. That is the biggest problem, I think. Mm -hmm. Because there is a lot of greenwashing happening at the moment. It's yes. cool. And then yes. we see H&M's conscious collection and you see the caring group you know coming up with a huge manifesto around it all but then how much is greenwashing you know it helps i mean i have to say it really helps us no matter whether it is true you know like a true intention or it is just greenwashing it's great because it creates lots of buzz 
Yes. And it's more important that Stella McCartney makes a huge fuss around something. You know, yes. we, we definitely feel the wave sort of slowly but surely, yes. you know, moving over to us. But yeah, it's really, really important that we, we also, but it comes back to education, I think, when you say transparency, yes. because people don't know what they're searching for. You know, a lot of people understand now, for example, that they shouldn't buy a deodorant with aluminium in it, right? They, yeah. they get that, and then everybody runs out, and that's kind of the thing. But then maybe they put something else in that people just don't know about. Right. And, yes. and, you know, that the transparency, you can give people all the transparency in the world, but will they understand it? Yes. I think is, I, I don't know what you, what you think about that. I find it tricky as well. I think, yes. Um, well, that's why I love 100% natural. That's mm. why authenticity and how natural something is, is really important because I know that the body works more harmoniously when you start using natural ingredients, the mm. body's awake and the body will react and stay working. So if you're using an organic moisturizer, you know, a natural moisturizer, and when it's organic as well, all that means is that the processing of those natural ingredients has been clean as well. So nothing's been sort of trickling mm. in along the way of developing those ingredients. Um, if it's just natural and not organic, then that's the bit that you're not sure of because mm. there may be things that have filtered through. It's probably a bit like Western medicine, right? I, I just had this epiphany yeah. <laughs> in my head thinking, you know, when you go to a doctor now in, you know, anywhere in the Western world, you normally, you know, you complain about you've got some pain in the knee, whatever. So you get pain medication yeah. that basically just erases the pain, but it doesn't look at the root of the problem, right? Exactly. And if I look at a hand cream, for example, a lot of people use horrible hand cream that probably gives you the feeling that your hands are smoother, but the minute you don't use it, your exactly. hands are horrible, right? And it basically also... Like with a lot of medicine, right? It creates an addiction. Yeah, Aspirin, definitely. Things body, like that. Different parts of the body would become addicted to that product. Yeah. So your skin will stop having its own moisture and actually becomes really dehydrated Horrible. with that hand cream yeah. scenario. Your skin, for the face cream scenario, your skin just stops producing oil. So and it's relying hair, completely God. on... Well, exactly. And that's exactly why I developed my hair care in the way that I did, because the hair is exactly the same. Mm. Yeah, and I think the hair we understand even less because it's not like, you know, the skin we feel more. Even, and, you know, yes. sadly, the hair doesn't have nerves in it, it right? So we, we don't, like, when yes. we feel our hands and we're like, oh, it's a bit dry, it feels uncomfortable all the time. Yeah. Whether for the hair, I think we, we just, whereas, you know, we, we just see the yes. hair, right? Yeah. We don't really feel it in that way. Yeah. So then probably people are like, ah. You know, it's not that important as long as it foams properly. Yeah. That's the great thing. <laughs> but, you know, that comes back to our earlier point of marketing and people not wanting to tell us the truth, really, and just inventing a lot of things to yeah. look more effective. Yeah, exactly. A lot of um, our belief system <sighs> fails us, really. The things we've been told for years uh, yeah. often isn't the truth. It's just been marketing stories along the way that we've all been holding on to. Now, I completely, I can see, but, you know, it's, it's always really what you know. And there is, there is, luckily, there's a lot of, like, when you, when you look at the, the movie, The True Cost, you know, that more and more people watch. Yes. I think the awareness is there, you know, with, sadly, it needs all the tragedy that has happened, mm -hmm. right? Sadly, it needs, like, I, I have to say, I love what's happening with Monsanto there, you know, it's, it's such a shame that this poor guy is now diagnosed with this terrible cancer and probably will not be able to get rid of it. But hey, for the first time, you know, it, it's a huge thing there. And I think people are questioning more and more what's in there, you know, and with campaigns like who made my clothes and, and all of these. Who, but then who made my clothes? Who made the fabrics that became the clothes, right? Like, where do you end? And even as a conscious consumer, to decide that, I think we just, we can aspire to it and we can just be open. We can always keep our, our ears open if we hear something somewhere, right? And then the word of mouth and just being the example that you want to be with the things that you're passionate about, yes. you know, then you can teach that someone else has, you know, it's probably better with other things and yes. then you bring it all together. And in the end, they're all connected because if you're using 
a specific oil, let's say, you know, then this oil is probably also really good for eating. I mean, I'm making this up now, but yes. You know, but argan's a good example of that. Yeah. You can eat argan oil as well as have it on your body, but things yeah. that really should be that pure if you were going to put them on our bodies, for example. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think it's, um, it's really um, interesting, the point you make, that it, we should... We shouldn't forget to still be able to have fun with yeah. all of this and, and still yeah. be able to enjoy. And, you know, the world needs to keep ticking and business needs to keep going. And that is how we function. Mm. But I think um, conscious consuming for me is more is about just feeling good about the purchases you make. And, and it might be that sometimes it's just because you want something that tastes mm. good in that moment and that's all okay too so it is i say that without judgment too because I oh think absolutely we can't be we have really this sort of trying to attain this perfection of always getting it right mm. you know and and you know i i've got one of my shampoos is in a plastic bottle but that plastic bottle is a recycled plastic and that plastic's already here so we as a brand chose to use some post-consumer plastic because it's already here. Where else mm. is it going to go? So let's keep it in the cycle and let's keep using it. Yeah. And it is fully recyclable, so it can go back in again. Now that's not a perfect solution by any means, but it is a, a, it's a, representative, um, a representation of now and where we're at right mm. now. I really believe there will be amazing innovations coming through because people are really clever. Oh yeah. And there will be some great ideas and there already are coming. I'm mm. hearing about all of the you know, dissolving bags and, and that go, might get into the sea and they'll completely biodegrade to nothing from, you know, all these wonderful things that are starting to come through. But yeah. it's getting them to the right quality, that they're usable, that they, they stay. And I think there are many, many companies out there that are sort of waiting at the moment to see what they can do to improve. But it is the consumer pressure that's It is, important. which is great, though. Yeah. It is great. That it's that, amazing that, that it's happening. That, that it's happening, and it's, it, it, that the consumers are awake and that they're looking for things that have a deeper story, that they can connect to someone that's behind that brand, that it isn't just mm. an other brand that's maybe owned by a much larger company that are, um, that's just lost its heart and soul. It's not the brand it mm. once was. And I think um, I had... Um, I was talking to, um, last week, I got to hear um, from Lord Stone, actually, who was the one of the original, one of the earlier um, CEOs of Marks & Spencer, and mm. I, I heard some lovely stories about, really oh, authentic so. stories about this, you know, Marks & Spencer through the years and the way that the passion about really creating beautiful things for everybody. Mm. And when I heard him speaking about that, it was just so alive, it was so lovely to hear that story mm. from the heart, that that's what they sort of set out to do with the company. Mm. And that's wonderful, but does the average person on the high street still recognize that? And you're raising an important point there. I actually, I went to a, a, a fashion show a couple of weeks ago um, by one of our lovely brands, Gung Ho. And um, Sophie creates um, she creates garments that basically always um, address an environmental cause. And her latest one is wonky vegetables, uh -huh. uh, fruit and vegetables. And um, we talked about supermarkets then. And um, what I did not know that so many products are completely wasted because if a cucumber isn't straight, it can't go through the plastic foiling machine. So it's thrown away, oh. and you know all these things that again, like Why where do you even start? Anyway? Exactly, <laughs> ready. And you know what's funny? There's a development in the UK at the moment, particularly with I, I think Morrison's in Iceland are doing it. The ones where you least expect it, but they think it's cool because they pick. They have some clever marketing people probably that picked up on sustainability. So they have more and more loose vegetables and fruits. And they also have a lot of wonky looking stuff for things that look different. And because they now picked up that this looks organic, if it is or not, you know, but they, they pick up on the trend. And Waitrose and Marks and Spencers, they still use, use so much plastic. It's really crazy, but there are more and more initiatives. And apparently, you know, this, there's this company called Oddbox and they, they work towards that, really working with wonky fruit and veg um, and getting Odd getting box. it That's out fabulous. there. That's fabulous. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, to, to really sort of, you know, work on that. But again, you know, this is, there's so many things. I didn't know that. I was absolutely shocked. I buy my cherries at Waitrose all the time, and apparently they only take the really dark ones, and if they're bright red, 
they're not getting into the box. And I'm like, I really love bright red cherries. <laughs> so yeah, but again, you know, it's education. I didn't know that before. Yes, yeah. Mm. Finding, looking for source, looking for, um, yeah, smaller independent companies that are being more realistic. Yeah. And I think it's all right, isn't it? Let's, you know, say that out loud. Let's oh, encourage yeah. companies to give us, the, you know, we don't need perfect. We can take those imperfect. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Vegetables and not dark. You know, we don't need it to look. That's. I think real is something that maybe people are much more hmm. drawn to, actually, whether they know it consciously or not. What you were talking about with the, you know, all these making the right choices. Yes. I think, funnily, this is where women come in probably more than men. Just, just looking at, at, you know, the traditional role models, because, you know, when you make decisions like you know which cherries do you buy yeah. or things like that it's funny that still you know when when i worked at google we, we did this big um, research on luxury products and even the ones that are luxury products bought by men are normally influenced by women more whereas ah. women are less easily influenced so they might not buy them in the end but yeah it's interesting and it, i don't think this is just true for luxury but you know it's it's particularly true for for health issues or for, you know, anything around sustainability. And, you know, particularly now as hopefully, uh, globally, the roles of women change significantly yes. and we're becoming more empowered and stronger than this voice of saying, look, I want to do the right thing for my family or for myself or for my group of friends. You know, the, yes. this, the voice gets stronger and stronger and kind of comes out stronger. I know this, does that make sense? It does make yeah. sense, okay. yeah, most definitely, yes, it does. I think, um, yeah, well, we've, we had, I love, you, you're just making me think about um, what we've both done for Sally Lane. Oh, yeah. Recently, um, we were both in the same article um, for women, um, strong yet feminine mm -hmm. women. And I know you, you can tell more about that, but I, I know you were telling me that, um, that this, that Sally also heads up something at Wolf and Badger. Yeah, so Sally leads a um, an event series called Strong Yet Feminine, um, where basically on a regular basis we get strong yet feminine. Uh, we actually like strong but feminine a bit more. Yes. You know, they, they are, so you know you can you can be strong but really feminine. Yes, absolutely. Um, and um, you know to get strong but feminine women in and really talk about their stories uh, to empower our customers, to empower our other brands. Yes. It's interesting what kind of people come. We, we do not only have women coming to no. these events as well. And really That's just wonderful. to empower telling stories that are a bit, you know, out of the box. You know, we both obviously with our individual stories believing in something and you know just fighting for this normally it's, it's, it's highly encouraging for others as well so basically we do this series where we have a very open discussion and you know a little bit of uh, a couple of interview questions that that sally leads um, but it is mostly a very open discussion because obviously yes. it I is like-minded yeah fantastic yes I spoke at one, um, and that was that was really interesting. And I think I love, um, I actually like your emphasis on but feminine, actually, as well, because yet or but, it brings up this idea of what it is to be feminine. Yeah. And yeah. there's so much more, um, but being feminine is actually to, um, to feel really good around masculine as well, of course. Mm. And, and, and that's what I love about the strong yet feminine, this idea that actually it's you know um, empowering women to be real women and not feeling that they have to be strong like men yeah that we are totally in fact the world needs us to be mm. very strong women and it needs us to be very feminine mm. women as well and bring all that that femininity encompasses oh absolutely um, yeah and that and that that is completely in tune and in harmony with masculine as well and that's there's it's not sort of instead of or you know, move over or any of that. I love that so many men are involved in that movement too, yeah. because that's the point. It is mm. together we're stronger, mm. but that there is an, an equal voice and that there's an equal, you know, if if both elements are there in, in anything, that there's just real balance. And, and maybe uh, so many of decision makers in big business have been predominantly male, 
then where is the feminine aspect of that conversation? And that's been what's missing in so many things that maybe have got us to the point that we were. Mm. Um, yeah, I completely agree. I think you're bringing up an, a very, very important point there that a lot of women, once they get to the top, they just behave like men. Yes. And I've seen this so many times. Yes, me too. And this, I really don't want to be that. And I have, um, when I worked at Google, I had uh, one, I still do have one major role model, and that was, um, well, that is Eileen Norton. She used to be the managing director for UK and Ireland, and then she was promoted to global head of what we would call human resources here. Right. Um, and when she was promoted, we had a, what Google calls an all hands meeting, so everybody could come and ask questions. And someone asked her, so what do you think is your biggest quality that you bring to the table for your new role? And she was, she's amazing. She's a redhead like me, so love her. Tall redhead who likes to wear <laughs> high heels like me, so it's Lovely. amazing. <laughs> and she, um, she said, oh, that's really easy. She's a, a New Yorker. <laughs> she said, that's really easy. It's my heart. Oh. And I absolutely love that because, that you know, she is, she's one of the only really powerful leaders because she obviously, you know, she heads up human resources for one of the most successful companies out there. Yeah. And that she's now at the top of that really gave me a lot of hope. Yes. Because that's like she leads with her heart. Yes. And for her to say that this is her biggest strength, because yes, you know, often wonderful. we're told that when we when we make decisions yes. on yeah, the basis of our heart, you're away. weak. Yes. You know, hard decisions are weak. But we know how, you know, trusting your intuition normally is the best thing that you can do. Absolutely. Obviously in a sensible way. Yeah, but you can also tune into it. You can train it. Yes. Right? And once you train your intuition. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just... Because I think a lot of people don't understand that there's a severe difference between intuition and just impulse. Yes. Right? For a lot of people, oh, gosh, it's they're the almost same polar opposites. Aren't yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think, yeah, uh, drawing on, on, on a sense of what you really feel deeply inside and just, as you say, tuning in mm. to... Um, yeah, a heartfelt decision. Totally. Yeah. No, for, for me, it's really, um, we always did this uh, exercise, oh, always. I've done in so many leadership workshops that I've participated in because I worked corporate for quite some time. Yes, of course. So there were a thousand different leadership, um, you know, how do you lead? What's your management style? Kind of all these. And every time, you know, it, it boiled down to you have to be strong and you know, a lot of them are very male. Yes. Or, you know, you're, you can only be, oh, there was one, one interesting one, this is Myers-Briggs test, right. which a lot of people do. So, um, and uh, Americans often have it on their business card so that you know immediately who you're talking to. And so you have the, I am ENFJ, no, FP. Um, e and F P, so it's basically um, E is extrovert and you know etc etc, and they always said I am the typical leader, like absolute typical leader, and then finally they find out that a lot of the really successful companies now are actually led by introverts, not by extroverts. How interesting! Um, because you know they uh, introverts often have more empathy than extroverts, yes. finally and are less egoistic. So if yeah. you see the new companies that are coming up that, you know, look at things more holistically, it is not just the me's. Yes. And, you know, that also obviously gives us the ENFPs or ENFJs as perceiving or judging, you know, yeah. the J or P. And I'm in between. Sometimes I'm this, sometimes I'm that. It's really funny. But, yeah, they, you know, we, are, we then have to learn as well from the others. And, you know, that, like... We talked about that before to have like a really inclusive group and learning from everybody no matter whether they're everybody. an intern yes or just you know uh, the, the, the cfo idea. i love that idea that everybody in, a, in an organization is is heard really and has mm. got something to bring mm. um and you know and and well, what you were just describing, you know, sort of, we've all got sort of that male and female element to us as well, of course. Oh, yeah. As have, has, have men. Um, and, and that, you know, just collaboratively, collaboratively within the group, that, that we're just kind of feeding on that. Because I think relationships between people bring out a different side of you too. Oh, yeah. You? So, but that, that all forms, there's something so much stronger in there than one person holding it all, mm. you know, and then that to the next tier, to the next tier, and this sort of pyramid top down. 
I don't know, there's so much lost in there, instead oh, of yeah. all the richness and all of that, the energy of all those people together collectively and just how much that can improve and bring a wider um, uh, energy and sort of stronger mm. soul to an, uh, an organisation would be is really interesting. But you need but, to have... That might be a conversation yeah. for another day. Oh, that yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big one that we could really get oh, into. absolutely. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, I yeah. love the idea of progressive new thinking around companies being mm. how they're set up as well and definitely having much more of the feminine in there too. Yeah, um, leading yeah. a bit more with leading your heart. Leading with your heart, love that, yes, yeah. totally. totally, totally, that's wonderful. The redheads, and thanks to you, <laughs> the new, newly fresh red, <laughs> shining bright. <laughs> yes, it looks fab, I'm very pleased with them, with how you've turned out today. Oh, I'm very pleased too, thank <laughs> oh, you very so much. Good to hear. so good to hear. Well, I think just to wrap up, I think, wow, we could, I know that you and I, Caro, could keep on talking for hours and hours and hours. Probably. I'd love to. <laughs> I hope if I get more opportunities to look after you and your hair so that we can talk more in the future. <laughs> I think that that is a threat from my side more <laughs> than anything else, but absolutely, yes, yes, absolutely. Well, thank I think you. it's been a real pleasure today and just want to thank you very, very much for your time and um, thank you for sharing your thoughts as well. Mm -hmm. I think, um, yeah, so any questions coming in um, as this is released, please fire away and we can maybe answer some questions afterwards. So thank you very Absolute much. Pleasure.